Hey guys, Eric with the Miller Park Minute where we're throwing strikes and getting likes. Today, I had the opportunity to sit down and talk to my good friend, Lorenzo Cain. Uh, so, Lil Cain is a two-time All-Star, 2015 World Series champion, gold glover as of last year, ALCS MVP, uh, and just an all-around good guy. Not today, Locaine. Watch the interview. Enjoy it. Uh, this is the full uncut deal. So enjoy watching as we talk to Lorenzo Kane. Hey. What's going on? Not much, man. How are you doing today? Doing well. Just trying to stay moving, you know. Right. Well, it's a weird time for, for all of us. You know, I'm just sitting here with my wife and we're just talking about how weird this all has been. I'm sure you're feeling that too, probably, huh? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Definitely not used to being home around this time. <laughs> right. Yeah, we were just saying how funny it is that you should be playing today, not on the phone. It's kind of sad. Yeah, very sad, but yeah. hey, what, what can you do, you know? Right. <laughs> we watched the uh, the replay of the game today, and that's still probably one of the most epic brewer catches of all time, and I'm sure you've thought about that moment, and that's one of your, your signature moments now. Oh, yeah, I actually just did another interview probably like an hour ago, and they were talking about it, so, <laughs> yeah, definitely one of my better catches, so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, <laughs> a goosebump-worthy moment. Oh, for sure. All right, so I'm going to get into this here now. Um, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this with me. Uh, it's a big, big deal. I've been kind of talking to some friends and just excited about it. So uh, I'm just going to kind of get into it um, here and just go through a couple things and however much time you want to give to it, great. I appreciate every minute you're giving me, so. All right, let's do it. All right, sounds good. So first off, um, how are you feeling at this point? I mean, I know I saw an interview a while back that you said you're feeling the, the best you've ever been, uh, better than ever, you know, your thumb and your knee and everything like that. But how has that progressed now that you're you're taking a little bit of time off? Yeah, like I said, I was definitely feeling really good. You know, uh, the knee was great. Uh, did a lot of off-season therapy on it. And uh, the thumb had no issues out of it. So uh, swinging the bat, you know, uh, running really good. And then all of a sudden, we just get shut down. So uh, it sucks, you know, because I know how hard, how hard I worked this off-season. Uh, the things that I did uh, to, to completely change my diet and, and, you know, my workout routine. Um Definitely ramped it up, and um, like I said, I was feeling great, you know, and I was at a point where, you know, we were close to starting the season, and and we get shut down. So uh, mm -hmm. it, it sucks, but uh, like I say, what can you do? You just got to keep moving and uh, trying to do the best I can to stay in the best shape I can without any equipment. <laughs> right, and well, your spring numbers really, really spoke to it. I mean, you were batting 389, and I know that's limited plate appearances and stuff like that, but... Uh, do you do you dive into that stuff? Do you look at where you were in the spring versus where you were last year? Yeah, well, for me, it's just like I said, I just want to swing feeling good. For me, it's all about just getting my timing. And as uh, long as I, I I leave spring training healthy, that's always my main goal. Just, right. Just, just stay healthy, and I feel like everything else take takes care of itself. You know, as far as my numbers. Um. Yeah, I was feeling great. You know, I just tried to change some things in my swing where I feel like I was, you know seeing a you know significant improvement in, in certain areas and uh like i say just keeping the body ready to go and uh like i said i was in a good place for sure before all of this happened yeah so so where did you did you go home once this happened are you back in milwaukee right now where yeah, are you I'm spending the time i'm in, I'm in uh, oklahoma right now uh oh, okay. when, they, when they officially told us uh we can go home milwaukee or or stay in arizona so I just would rather be quarantined at my house than anywhere else. So, uh, yeah, we take me and my wife, we take 
pick the kids up, and uh, we ended up driving 15, 16 hours from Ooh. Arizona, and we did it in one day, mm-hmm. and uh, we got in at like 4.30 in the morning, but but we got there safe, and everybody was happy, you know, happy to see us for sure. Yeah, and and I don't know if you you know. I mean, I I know you're probably not the best or the biggest social media guy, but there's a couple of videos that have surfaced of you playing with the kids. Have you seen them? I have. My wife, you know, um, she she knows I'm not the biggest fan of being recorded and, and being posted on social media, but uh, yeah, she's getting the kick out of it. She's enjoying it to the fullest because um, you know this is a weird time, but at the same time she. It's to see another side of me of, of cleaning and, and, and being a dad to the fullest, I guess you would say. And, I'm actually, um, I'm actually in that boat myself. My wife is recovering from an ankle fusion surgery, and uh, we got shut down uh, at my work as well. So I'm home and I'm taking care of her while she recovers. And uh, yeah, I'm doing the cleaning and stuff like that. I drive her a little nuts, but you know, I think that's what we do, right? Yeah, that's what we do. It's, it's definitely tough, you know, doing all the all the work around the house. You know, it's definitely tougher than I thought. So uh, yeah, kudos and, and props to them for sure. Right, right. I, I value my wife more than I ever did right now. <laughs> for one hundred percent. Um. So, you know, one of the big things that that you've you've accomplished here now is the gold glove. Uh, last year was your first gold glove and I think it was overdue at this point. And, you know, you may have a different opinion on that, but I think you've always been a playmaker and, uh, how good did that feel when you got that gold glove, when the, uh, announcement or the phone call came to you? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it was amazing. Uh, great feeling. I, I know. I know what I put my body through out here as far as, you know, diving and running to walls and, and, and you know, doing everything necessary to, to catch a baseball. And uh, I, I agree with you. Is I feel like it's definitely well, way overdue. And um definitely happy I was able to get one before my career ended. Cause, you know, because I was, I was a little nervous. That I didn't think I would get one because uh, I feel like I had a lot of, a lot of great seasons. And in which I didn't receive one, but uh, like I say, I'm always going to continue to try to be a playmaker, catch everything possible, and uh, like I say, maybe, maybe this is the start of of, uh, of something great. So we, maybe we can continue to, you know, not only get one, two, three before before I hang it up for sure. Right, hey, and that's hey, that's what we want to see. I mean, uh, you know, two time All Star, being an All Star, your first season back, and just the numbers you hit your first season with us back again with us, I should say, I mean, that's got to feel good. Milwaukee to Kansas city. I'm sure it's a very similar feel, but what is the real difference? Um, American league national league. What's the the real major difference there? Uh, for me, you know, um, as far as like the cities and, and fan base, I feel like they're very similar. You know, being small, small market teams, um, you know, both cities really support their team to the fullest. And uh, that's that's all you can ask for. I mean, that's what you want. But, um, you know, for me, just switching over from AL to the NL is, you know, NL, I, I basically had to prepare myself like I was going to play. NL, when I had a day off, like I was basically off, you know, so... <laughs> But in the NL, like, I'm still learning. I'm still, you know, adjusting to it because when I get a day off, I just can't completely shut down because it's a, it's almost a, you know, guarantee that I'm gonna go in the game. So for me, that's the, that's the biggest change that I'm adjusting to from NL to AL for sure. And you're a fighter. You don't want to get put out of the game. I remember uh, you were beat up this last season, and there was a lot of games where you were. You were playing, and I didn't think you were you were one hundred percent. But you you still came out there and gave us one hundred percent. Yeah, for sure. The last year was probably one of my worst years as far as you know the injuries, just just nagging all year long. You know, just you know, I had the thumb deal for two months, two three months, and then the knee flared up and then it bleak. So you know, all, all kind of stuff was just going on last year, but. uh I'm a kind of guy, you know, my numbers might have took a hit for it, but, you know, that, that doesn't bother me. For me, it's, it's just being out on the field, you know, uh, competing day in and day out with my teammates. And, uh, yeah, it is tough for me to, tough for them to take me out of the lineup because I don't want to be out of the lineup if I'm 
if I'm there and if I'm healthy enough to play, I'll be out there on that field. So, um, yeah, I mean, me and Council, we, we went back and forth a little bit last year because, uh, you know, they tried to sit me a little bit. But uh, at the same time, you know, uh, my, I like to be on the field. I like to be out there with my teammates grinding each and every day. And, uh, you know, there's just no better feeling than just being out there consistently and, and I'm doing what I can to, to just make plays. Right. Well, and, and with the way last season transpired and, you know, not to talk too much about our friend Christian Yelich, but with <laughs> with Christian going down, I mean, I'm sure the weight jumped on to a lot of your guys' shoulders and a lot of you guys wanted to go out there and do everything you can. And how, how much does that really change the dynamic when, you know, your go-to guy, your superstar, you know, goes down with three weeks left of the season. Yeah, I mean, it was it was tough, tough to deal with. So, like I say, he is, he is our best player. Um, and uh, like I say, we, for some weird reason, we started playing better when he got hurt. I don't, I can't explain that really. <laughs> but <laughs> that usually doesn't happen when your best player gets hurt. And, and as a team, you start playing better. But uh, like I said, we felt like we all had to kind of pick up the slack and, uh, you know, um, understanding that Christian wasn't there anymore. We all just kind of, you know, one guy at a time, one game at a time. Um, guys just stepped up in big ways. And it was a definitely a total team effort down the stretch. And um, like I said, we found a way to get in the playoffs. It was short, but at the same time, you know, it was definitely uh, a, a great season for us to, you know, just be in the position we were in and to still make the playoffs, even though we didn't have our best player. Now, you don't have a, a long history of you kind of got in the game late, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So, you uh, being being into the game late, did you, were you a numbers guy? Did you follow the numbers? Do you look at your numbers on a day-in, day-out basis, or do you just kind of let them be what they're going to be and you're going to play the hardest you can? Yeah, that's always been me. I've never been a, a stat guy, you know, checking his numbers every day or every at bat. I've never been that guy. I've always focused on just being healthy and, and making sure I'm on the field. That's always been my main concern, my main focus. Yeah. Um, I always just let my numbers just take care of themselves. Um, I don't set goals as far as, oh, I'm going to hit 20 home runs or steal 40 bags or whatever. I don't set goals. I just go out there uh, day in and day out, give you my best effort. And uh, just kind of see what happens. That that's that's awesome. I mean, I think that the way that you play the game and the intensity, you know, just in in your in your demeanor on the field has been one that's been really awesome to watch. Especially being a long life Brewers fan, you know, seeing you go leave and come back, and I'm sure one of the one of the big things in that was Milwaukee was a similar club. What are the other reasons that, you know, when you were in free agency, what were the other reasons that Milwaukee was the choice for you? Uh, like, I say, uh, like I say, Milwaukee, for me, another reason, I mean, there's a lot of reasons that factored into it. You know, one, they drafted me. They gave me my first opportunity, you know, uh, to become a big leaguer. Um, they believed in me. They drafted me. So that's another, one reason I want to come back. Uh, playing in a dome is always nice. <laughs> so, 80, 81 games inside uh, is another reason that attracted me. I, you know, I, the fans speak for themselves. You know, I, I don't know if I need to mention them or not, but they speak for themselves. Um, yeah, um, I just saw the you know trajectory of, of just the way the team was going. It had a lot of young players that that were you know starting to get going and, and be great ball players. And um, and uh, like I said, it's, it's uh, the team that drafts me, I just want to do everything I could and, and you know, give my best effort to hopefully bring a, bring a championship back to Milwaukee, you know. So that's that's still my main goal. That's still my main focus. So, um, you know, we still try striving to get there, get to that point. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Milwaukee is a place me and my family love being, and uh, I'm just happy to be back. Oh, that's great. We, we love having you, too. It's one of the <laughs> – you know, and it's so funny to think because that day that that – that uh, signing and trade happened in the same day. Lost my mind. <laughs> I'm sure you were probably, you know, I don't know if you knew that they had gotten Christian Yelich at that time or. Oh, I, I didn't actually. They, they kept it pretty, they kept it under wraps for sure. So I didn't, 
once I sign, and then uh, and then next thing I know, we got Christian Yelich as well. So uh, yeah, it was definitely a great day, you know, not only for myself but uh, you know Milwaukee as well. So uh, that's what me, myself, and Christian were trying to do, you know, uh, and the rest of the, the game, you know, we're trying to do what we, do what we can, you know, um, to bring that championship back to Milwaukee. So you know, uh, this year is, you know, who knows what's going to happen this year, but uh, right, you know, hopefully this thing ends soon and we can get back to work. Are you okay with double headers that they've been talking about? That's gonna be tough. <laughs> <laughs> I heard yeah, something like two tough. a week. Yeah, I mean a lot of double headers. That's that's definitely gonna be tough on, on the body. Um, but at the same time, and maybe if they expanded the, the rosters, you know, uh, maybe 30, 35 people, you know, maybe they can find a way to make it work. So uh, we'll see what happens. You know, it's, everything's still up in the air right now, but uh, hopefully they can figure something out. Right, I, I agree. I mean, I think, you know, once baseball starts, I think that's what we're all looking for. We're just, we want the game to start again. Um, with that being with that being said, you know, starting the game and stuff like that, now, did, have they talked or have you heard anything about additional training time? Are you guys going to go back to Arizona or don't you know? Are you kind of just in a wait and see kind of atmosphere? Uh, well, where, where, where I'm at with it or what, the latest I've heard was um, whenever they decide to start, uh, they're probably going to give us a, probably a three-week window where we can, um, you know, basically have spring training. I'm not sure where exactly. I don't know if we're going to have to go back to Arizona or we're going to hold it in Milwaukee and kind of go from there. So, you know, the destination of the spring training is still up in there as well. So we'll see what happens. But we're definitely going to have a – or a two, three week window where we gotta we can wrap it up again and kind of just get ready for the season. Well, that's exciting. That's very exciting. There's there's a lot of good things to come. I think you know we've got a couple good years of your baseball left. I'm assuming that you're probably gonna want to end up and wrap up in Milwaukee. Um, yeah, that's that's definitely the plan right now. I, I plan on finishing my career in Milwaukee and. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, taking a year off, who knows? I might, you know, play one more year. Who who knows? <laughs> <laughs> that's great. No, that's good. We we look forward to hearing that. You know, that's yeah. that's stuff that fans love. You know, we love that you came back. We love that you signed at the right time. And we have the, kind of this powerhouse of guys in the outfield. And I know you guys spend a lot of time together. But who outside of, you know, the other outfielders do you do you spend a lot of time with? You know, I see... Brent Suter is always kind of clowning around with you before yeah. games and in the dugout. Is he one that's uh, kind of become a friend or? Yeah, I mean, they, I'm, I basically, you know, for me, I, I basically get along with everybody. I've just always been that way where I just, I just click or whatever you want to say. I just get along with everyone. I've always been able to do that, and um. And uh, and uh, yeah, I forgot what I said. But um, Brendan Woodruff is 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 my guy. He, he's he's the guy that that you know always at my locker, always you know sitting next to me on on the bus or playing rides, stuff like that. So uh, mm -hmm. Woodruff is is a guy that you know we we gravitate towards each other for some reason. So um, that's yeah, no, that's but, cool. Yeah, so so he's he's my guy, but what I mean, um, Sue to be, um, we actually text all the time, and um, yeah, he he knows I, I don't like all the attention, so, <laughs> so he gives a little extra in the dugout, which you know it's all it's all okay and fun, but you know me, I just kind of sit off to the side, and just <laughs> let him let him do his thing, you know. <laughs> right, right, I I totally get it. All right, I only got a few more things here. Um, one, what is your favorite opening day moment, being that it's opening day and we're not playing? What's your favorite opening day of your career so far? Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, wow. A lot of opening days. Um, <laughs> yeah, what I do a mold about opening day is just, like I said, the, the, just the first game getting started, you know, the... You know the when they when they call 
all of us announce our names. We're running out towards to the line, and all the fans are cheering for it. That's cheering, cheering for you. Uh, that's that's what I enjoy the most. You know, just that first game of just everybody's seeing you again. You know, the season's starting. Everybody's hyped up. Everybody's excited. So, um, you know, that's that's what I enjoy the most uh, about opening day for sure. All right, all right, fair enough. What's your What's your favorite career moment to this point? Career moment. I would guess I would say winning the World Series, you know. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, winning World Series is definitely one of the – people don't realize how tough it is to win a World Series. You know, a lot of things have to go right for you to win a World Series. And um, to be fortunate enough to go to two World Series, we lost one, won one. To go to back-to-back World Series when I was in KC was definitely special. And um, that's definitely a moment I'll never forget. And I still watch the videos sometimes, still give me bumps, bump, you know, and chill. So I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it to the fullest. But um, like I said, I, I want to get have that feeling again and, and get that feeling again because I miss it. it. It's been a few years for sure. Bring it to <laughs> Milwaukee, right? Oh, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I want to do. And you were an MVP in the ALCS, so, I mean... That yeah, that I mean, that's, that's a that's a good feeling. About that, but yeah, I mean, I got I got a I got a lot of awards there. You know, I'm I'm gonna build a house here uh, soon, and um, I got a lot of my awards just just stuffed in the closet somewhere. So I gotta <laughs> I want to I wanna gotta get them out and get them on display for sure. I like to say we have three MVPs in the outfield, just so you know. I I don't know if you catch flack for that with Braun and uh, Yelich, but next time I would bring that up if they're they're giving you some flack. Yeah, I have to let them know. You know, I got an MVP to my name. So, uh, <laughs> I you guys group. <laughs> what's your What's your favorite Brewers moment at this point in time? Oh, wow, Brewers moment. Oh man, oh, let me think. Let me think. My favorite. As far as you know, making a play or just play playoffs. What was what was one of the most the things that sticks out in your head the most so far? One, one thing that sticks out the most. I mean, it wasn't about me. It was about another player. But my guy Brandon Woodruff taking Kershaw deep. That was that was one of my my. I mean, it's not my moment, but you know, my Brewer moment that I enjoyed. And I was so fired up for him. And he was. I don't know if you guys saw him when you went in the dugout. He was like fired up and pumped up. And, yeah. and if, if you watch the video, when he came around home plate and he gave me a high five, I think he almost broke my arm because it's <laughs> <is> so hard. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's, that's definitely yeah. the hardest high five I've ever received, that, ever. <laughs> that was definitely a moment because, like, we, even here when we were watching it, it was just like, oh, my God. Like, seriously, it was right. just, it was so cool and intense. Unbelievable! Yeah, I couldn't believe it, man. That, that was so I was so pumped for him. So uh, yeah, things like that. That's that's what gets me excited. Just guys doing special things like that, and, and and just seeing them just light up. That that's that's what makes my day. I I get it. I agree. I mean, that's you know some of the best best moments have happened over the last two years, uh, especially being a Brewers fan, long life, and you know you got you and Yelich signing. I think those are just some of the the best moments we've had. So I have some funny random ones uh, here. And uh, first of all, I'm going to go chunky or creamy peanut butter. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, uh, a lot of people know this about me. Um, I can't just answer that question because I ate so many PB&Js in the minor leagues that I can't stand the smell of them anymore. <laughs> I just can't. I won't eat them. My kids eat those crustables all the time, and I just can't do it. I just, I, I got to tell them, just get away from me. I can't stand the smell of it anymore. So, neither. Please. Neither. <laughs> neither. I got gotcha. you. Okay. All right, I'm going to wrap it up with this one. Being, being the time frame is kind of a weird question, but three teammates that you would select – for the zombie apocalypse. Three teammates you would want with you to survive the zombie apocalypse. Who would they be? Oh, wow. Well, I gotta go with Suda B. He's very animated with the, with the raptor and everything, you know. Um, I would go Suda B. Uh, three of my teammates. Who else? Nah, Yelly's Yell too pretty for the uh, zombie apocalypse. <laughs> I can't. I can't, I can't pick him. Him and Brian are in the, you know, the perfect category. I can't select those guys. Um, let me see who else. What, everything he's gone. That would have been nice. 
for the muscles. Um, who else? Uh, gosh, let's see. Suter B. Let's go just to smoke. And... Man, it's a tough one. And... Oh, man, I can't think of that. Um, Suter B, Justin Smoke. Woody? Yeah, let me get my guy. I got to throw my boy Woodruff in there, huh? <laughs> I was thinking Woody or Hater. Woodruff in there. So Woody, Woodruff, Suter B, and Justin Smoke. Yeah, those are my three. <laughs> All right. Well, I think you do fairly well with those three. So, all right. I don't really have much more for you. Um, my my wife uh, wanted me to mention that she uh, has befriended your mom on Facebook, and your mom is 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 she really is fun. So cool. I love her. <laughs> yeah, she's something else. I, I I had to let her know how to tell her to calm down. If you know, if if somebody say something you know bad about me, oh. <laughs> just get on them and get up their throat. I'm like, mom, just don't don't respond. <laughs> yeah, well, the majority of what I see is everybody mm. says like, "Would she your smile?" We actually like will tag her and stuff when you, like pictures of you come across, and we're all like, "His smile is like contagious." And then there was a picture of her smiling, and I said, "Now I know where he gets it from." You guys yep. do very similar. It's it's funny. Yeah, she's she's. I love her. She's awesome. Yeah, Mama Duke. She uh, she's the best. Uh, hopefully, all this can settle down so I can get out, get an opportunity to hang out with her and see her again. It's been a while for sure. Yeah. Right. That's cool. Mm-hmm. I I don't have much more for you. The only one more thing is I'm going to ask for a sound bite, and it's just going to be. All I need you to say is thank you for watching the Miller Park Minute. I got you. Ready? Ready. Thank you for watching the Miller Park Minute. Awesome. Wow. Thank you. So, All right, guys. I appreciate your time. Thank you for taking the time out to, to do this with me today. I, you don't even know how, how awesome and what, what this really means to me. So you All stay right. safe. Keep those kiddos safe. Take care of your wife. All that good stuff. You guys stay safe as well, and uh, I'm sure I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, hope to see you soon. All right, sounds good to me. All right, bye. All right, later, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching the Miller Park Minute. Go Brewers.